Hey Plant Fam! Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Jacqueline. This is part of my jungle, not even close to being all of it. Um, if you're not new here, thank you for coming back. So today I have a video that's like way overdue for you guys. I told you I was going to do this a really long time ago and I just completely forgot. And then recently I realized that um, you guys still had a lot of questions about this and you still wanted me to make this video. So that's what we're doing. So obviously you guessed by the title and you, you clicked on this video. So you're here. Um, thank you for being here. Hi. <laughs> I'm in a weird mood. I'm really, I'm just, I'm in a good mood. So I'm just like, you know, a little hyper. But um, we're going to be going through, I have like six things on my list of what you need to know before and after importing plants. So it is a very risky thing to do. I just imported some in case you guys missed that. Um, and I was very worried, <laughs> very, very worried about the state of these plants. Thankfully, it turned out okay, but that doesn't, that's not always the case. So there are a lot of things that can go wrong, but there are also a lot of things that can go right. And the reason people take the risk of importing plants is because you can get them for significantly cheaper than you can if you bought them within the States. So you know, there's things, there's things that we're going to need to know beforehand. And the first thing that you need to know is not all importers are trustworthy. And it is really important to find an importer that you can trust, which means you need to do a lot of research and you need to ask them some questions. <laughs> so, First of all, I, I have a love-hate relationship with Reddit, but it is a good place to go to ask questions like this because you will find a lot of information. I'm sure there's Facebook groups and things like that as well where you can find people who have imported with specific companies and see for yourself. There's also tons of like YouTube videos. I've reviewed a handful of importers here on my channel. Um, both like free stuff that I've gotten from them as well as things that I've I've purchased. So um, every import that you've seen me get over the, this year and probably the second half of last year um, were all imports that I've paid for. So none of them were uh, for free. And I always tell you guys if they are. So the one that I did get for free, everything came dead last year. And I, I still haven't shared it with you guys because they told me not to because they were going to replace them. And they never did. So I'm probably just going to share it. I think I put it as a members only video. Maybe I'll make it public. Let me know if you guys want to see it. It's old. Um, but it was bad. It was bad. Oh, I cried in that one for sure because there were so many wish list plants in there and they were all just completely melted. So definitely need to find a trustworthy importer or supplier and something can still go wrong even if they are a good and trustworthy importer, but a good importer is going to make it right with you because they want to keep you as a customer. A bad importer is going to do nothing about it and then you're never going to come back again. <laughs> so um, I mostly import with Air Raid Asia. You guys probably know that already if you watch my videos. Um, I've developed a really nice relationship with them so that if something does go wrong, like there's a solution in the future. Like anytime a plant has come not looking great, they've fixed it. So um, yeah, there's that. So it's it's really important to do your research, read reviews, talk to people within the plant community and see like, is this person or is this company reputable? Like, am I, am I being stupid? Cause we did Asian plant import, export, something along those lines. I don't remember. And it was a disaster. And then when I looked it up on like Reddit and stuff, everybody was like, yeah, this place is a disaster. Like, don't waste your money. And I was like, ugh. <sighs> 
probably should have looked at that before I spent my money um, on those plants. So there is there's definitely some questions that you should have for importers too because we want to be conscious of where our plants are coming from. Um, unfortunately, there are a lot of people who don't do things the right way and they are just plucking these plants from their natural habitat. We call that poaching and selling them. So it is okay to ask people where they source their plants from. And if they give you a sketchy answer, sometimes they lie about it. Like literally nobody is ever going to tell you, yeah, we took these from nature. <laughs> But there are some ways that you can tell, especially with like Hoya, if you get your Hoya and it literally looks like it was in nature and plucked from a tree, it's probably because it was grown in nature and plucked from a tree. Um, so there, there are signs that we need to look for, for sure. Like always be skeptical of every single importer. Do not trust anybody straight off the bat, period. So it is really important to find good people that you can develop a relationship with so that you can continue to have good experiences if importing is something that you want to do. Number two on my list of things that you should do before you import plants is look into the plants that you want to import. So if you have specific plants on your wish list in mind, that you are looking to import from another country, whether that be Indonesia, China. I think people even get them from Russia, like certain Hoyas. I don't know if anybody does anymore, but like people used to. Um, so definitely research each individual plant that you're looking at and whether or not that plant ships well. I can't even tell you how many times I wish I knew, <laughs> Hoya especially, that it, that plant in particular just was a bad shipper and it probably wasn't a good idea to import it because when you import plants, they are in shipping for longer than they would be if you ordered them from Florida. You know what I mean? I can get plants from Florida in two days and it's not going to be a problem if it... I've gotten plants from Florida in a few days that were bad shippers and came looking bad. Imagine getting them all the way from China. So just be mindful of that because there are certain plants that are very temperature sensitive. They might just be sensitive to, gee, I don't know, being shoved in a dark box <laughs> for like days at a time, sometimes weeks it can take for your import to actually get to you. It's got to go to a, a facility in another country. It sits there. It gets scanned in, sorted, yada, yada. Where is it going? It gets put on a plane, girl. And the plane has to come all the way here. And then it gets here and it sits in customs. They have to make sure everything is all good. Sometimes they make you pay a fee because they're jerks. Um, that's usually just with DHL though, I think but um we'll get there <laughs> so keep that in mind these plants are gonna be in a box for longer than they would be if you were getting them within your country so um definitely be mindful of what plants are gonna be good versus bad shippers like the import that i just got in i felt comfortable ordering wholesale with that specific philodendron because I know that that specific philodendron is a good resilient plant and a good shipper and it bounces back and it grows really quickly. So there are certain plants that I just stay away from importing like syndapsis for example. I have had like really bad success <laughs> rate with getting syndapsis to be happy and acclimated and rerouted once it's been imported. So I stick to trying to get my syndapsis more locally, <laughs> but um, definitely look into what plants are going to be good shippers versus what plants are going to be bad shippers. Because if you're going to put in the investment, girl, please make sure that you're not setting yourself up for failure. Okay. Okay. So the next two things on my list are the two things that I know you guys have the most questions about, and that is the importing process in general how do you go about it what do you need to know do you have to get a permit yada yada so number three on my list is you can 
order up to 12 plants from another country without a permit. If you want 13 plants, you're going to need an import permit. And that's going to be different depending on where you live. So each state is going to be different. If you're in Canada or another country, I can't help you boo-boo. It's going to be completely different getting your import permit. It's usually free and you just have to fill out a form. I haven't done it yet, but I need to. So like once I have, I can definitely like fill you in a little bit better. But from what I'm told, it's really easy. You just have to fill out the form and kind of wait for it to get approved. Then you get your permit. Once you have your permit, you'll be sending a copy of your permit to the importer so that they can have it on file and attach it, I, I assume, probably attach it to the box so that when it gets here, they know. So the only other thing that's going to be different is when you import 12 plants or less, it comes in through regular U.S. Customs. When you import 12, more than 12 plants, so a large amount of plants, it's actually not going to go through customs. It goes through the USDA, Department of Agriculture, for them to inspect it and make sure that there is nothing wrong with the plants, that there's no pathogens on the plants, no bugs on the plants. If they detect anything wrong with your plants, they will get rid of them. They will destroy your plants. And there's nothing you can do about it. That is the fault of the importer for not properly sanitizing the plants. And that is number four on my list is you're going to need a phytosanitary certificate. Most importers just like automatically are going to add it to your cart at checkout. You might have to add it yourself. It's usually about $30. And basically what they do is they sanitize your plants. <laughs> so there's no soil. Everything comes just bare root. Um, they're not supposed to ship in moss, although some people do ship in moss. Um, and it's just supposed to be very sterile. So when you get your plants, if you've ever imported before, um, you'll know that, that they kind of smell like like a hospital almost or like um, like a sterile environment because they've literally sterilized your plants. So I always recommend when you get them, like rinsing them and obviously taking care of them, treating them with whatever you normally treat them with when you get them for that reason. So um, you can import up to 12 plants. You need a phytosanitary certificate even if you only import one, one plant, but you only need one certificate per order. So I hope I covered all of your questions. I know that those are like the two most common things that people want to know. And it's not, it's not complicated, I promise you. Like I said, most importers, if they have a website, if you're buying through a website, because some importers, like, you just tell them what you want, apparently, and they ship it. I've never done that before. But um, uh, on a website, usually they're going to add it automatically to your cart, so you don't have to worry about it. Um, and like I said, it's usually about $30. So that's a that's a non-negotiable. If you're going to import plants from another country, you have to get a phytosanitary certificate. And as long as you're not buying more than 12 in one order, then you don't need an import permit. So there is that. <laughs> Number five is another uh, big question I get, and that is shipping. So it's going to be different for every importer, but a lot of them use DHL. I prefer DHL. It tends to be cheaper um, and faster and more reliable and easy to track than other um, just like I don't I don't even know. I don't even know what else <laughs> people use to import because I think I've only ever done DHL and the only time that I didn't, it went terribly, terribly wrong. <laughs> like like bad and I know you guys know some people have gotten plants from like Russia shipped to them in like t-shirts and like weird stuff because people are usually doing things illegally they're not doing like the phytosanitary they're not like doing things through the proper channels that they're supposed to be doing them through so they just kind of come in a box like as if your friend sent them to you you know what I mean so Shipping can be expensive depending on who you're importing with. So some places are very, very pricey. Most of the time I'm paying around $50 to import 
my plants, but it can be a lot more than that if you're using something other than DHL. So definitely be mindful of shipping costs because sometimes the plants are a lot cheaper, but the shipping cost is so high that is it like really worth it to just save a little bit of money to take all of that risk on when you can just spend like $50 more and have the plant shipped to you more locally within your country and to have a better chance of it not dying. So there are a lot of things that can go wrong in shipping. There are some people who just don't know how to package their plants properly to be shipped to a different climate. Um, so definitely, again, look at reviews for different things, talk to people in the plant community and see what their experience have been with shipping with different people. So that's really all I can say about it. There's a lot of things that can go wrong that are completely out of your control. It can get held up. Sometimes they don't put proper ventilation in the, in the box. The temperature matters. Um, you know, you don't want to import in the middle of summer. Usually it's like you're, you're probably going to get melted plants. Um, so keep that in mind. Shipping. Shipping can be expensive and it can take a while. And the, the time it takes them to process your order, like when you import and you place an order, it can take like a month for your plants to actually get here because it takes them a while to go through the phytosanitary process and all of the other things that they have to do to prepare your plants to be shipped to another country. So it's not like an instant gratification thing at all. And there are so many things that can go wrong <laughs> in between you ordering and you actually getting your plants that it can be very stressful. Uh, but when it works out, it is so worth it. So that is shipping. Number six on my list and the final thing on my list is what you do when your plants finally get here. So you've done all of the things, you ordered your plants, you got your phytosanitary certificate, you did all the stuff you were supposed to do, you waited patiently for three to six weeks probably, and um, now your plants are here, they're okay, what do you do with them? So I have talked about this a lot and I do have like an import plant playlist that I'm probably going to add this to just for convenience so that everything will be in one place. But um, I talk about it a lot in those videos. So if you want to watch like more hands on like what I'm actually doing with like physical imports, um, literally the same thing I would do with um, any other like unrooted plant that I get. You have to assume that these roots are not going to be good. A lot of the time you're going to have to reroute your imports. Um, and there's going to be a rehabilitation period. So you're not going to just like get a gorgeous plant and it's going to continue to grow and be gorgeous. A lot of the time, the first like leaf or two out on a new uh, import is n smaller. Sometimes it can come in a little bit wonky as the plant acclimates, but eventually you your plant gets it sorted out and it grows and it's beautiful. So it just takes a little bit more time. But the very first thing that I do is I clean the plant, rinse it off, assess the roots. If I'm feeling like they're just no good, a lot of the time I'll cut them. I won't cut them off completely, but I will cut them shorter because sometimes you have these really long roots that are just like dying anyway, so it's pointless. Um, and I try to keep anything that looks healthy and then I put them in water. And I will keep them in water for at least a week, if not a little bit longer than that just to rehydrate them. They've been in a box for a while. You want to do that with pretty much any plant that you get in the mail. Um, it's probably thirsty. Usually I tend to water my plants as soon as I get them. Um, sorry, I'm looking over here at my imports <laughs> that I just got in case you're wondering why I'm looking over here. It's like a bouquet of, of philodendron. Um, but they're all sitting in water. They're going to stay there for at least a week. And then I'm going to take them out. I'm going to reassess their roots. Anything that was going to die will have died. And you're going to want to clean off all of that. Um, sometimes I like to wait until I see new roots sprouting in the water. Um, but a lot of the time it's just as long as the plant is stabilized, I will then move it over to a mossy perlite mix and just propagate it and reroute it in the same way that I would anything else. And again, once it's had 
its cup all filled up with roots, then I feel comfortable transferring it into whatever medium it's going to live in. So, or listing it and selling it. Um, so yeah, that's really it. I think I covered everything. So just to recap, Find a trustworthy importer. Make sure you ask them where they get their plants from. Look into what plants are good versus bad shippers. I promise you will not regret the time and the, the research for this one. You can import up to 12 plants without needing an import permit. If you want to order more than 12 plants in one order, you need an import permit. It is a really easy process. You can just fill out the form but it's gonna be different depending on where you live. You'll also need a phytosanitary certificate. Most importers will automatically supply it for you, but it costs about $30 um, from my experience anyway. I've never paid more than $30 for a phytosanitary certificate. Lots of things can go wrong in shipping <laughs> and it can be expensive. So be mindful of who the shipper is like who what company they're using to ship so like I usually prefer DHL and if somebody doesn't offer DHL I probably won't order from them and then finally when you get your plants just make sure you understand that there is going to be an acclimation process um, and there are things that you need to do and look out for to make sure that your plants are thriving in your care so definitely check out my import playlist. I've got lots of unboxings and reviews of different companies over there, some really good experiences, some really bad ones, and um, a lot of updates on imports and how they're doing, how I've acclimated them, and all of that good stuff. So definitely go and check that out if you are looking for even more information. If I left anything out and you still have a question, definitely leave it down below because I'm forgetful. And I, sometimes I'll be editing and I'm like, damn it, I forgot like the, the one thing. It happens. I'm a human. <laughs> so that's it for this video, you guys. If you enjoyed hanging out with me today, you should give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything from me. There's a join button down there if you want to be part of the official plant fam. Get yourself some perky perks. Um, although I haven't made a, a members only video in a while. I should probably do that. Um, let me know what you want to see. And uh, there's a super thanks button. If you guys want to super thanks me. Everything is appreciated. I am so grateful for you. I cannot do this without you guys. And I love you. I hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are in the world. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.